Hi, my name is Eugene Stepanov. I'm a senior database solution architect with AWS. Here at AWS, I focus on SQL Server and Postgres. And today, we will take a careful look at the brand new feature that we launched on May 5th of this year, uh, 2020, and that is RDS support for Microsoft Distributed Transaction Coordinator. Now, MSDTC has been such an important part of Microsoft ecosystem for distributed applications, where you need to execute a transaction across multiple instances. Now, prior to May 5th, you could not have RDS instance to be a participant in the distributed transaction. And now, since May, RDS added support for Microsoft Distributed Transaction Coordinator. And today, we will see how that can be done. So with that, let's take a look at our agenda. Uh, first, we will take at the prerequisites. Then we will take, uh, take a look at the uh, step-by-step instructions for this demo. And then right after that, we will jump straight to the demo. And we will end this discussion with taking a look at some of these limitations, limitations that this feature comes with. All right, prerequisites from the very top. MSDTC must be enabled in the option group. Those of you who already played with uh, native restores or possibly TD or BI like reporting services, analysis services, integration services, know that these all these great features have to be enabled in the option group first. MSDTC follows the same path. You, and we will have it created and enabled um, during our demo. Second one, in doubt transaction resolution must be set to 100 in a parameter group. Now, without going into too much theory about two-phase commit, um, it's sufficient to say that in doubt transaction resolution setting controls the default outcome of a transaction that cannot be resolved by MSDTC. Now, if we jump to Microsoft documentation, um, and I will include this link to my PowerPoint for those of you who need to understand it in, in, in depth and detail, uh, but essentially three values are supported, zero, no presumption, one, presume commit, and two, presume abort. The reason why we don't support zero or no presumption is simple. Now, if you own EC2 or you own on-prem, you can always pull the list of in doubt transaction, review them manually, and roll back or roll forward manually. Uh, since RDS is a managed service, there is no ability to, uh, to use that GUI and to, use, to pull that list. So we have to configure MSDTC in a way that it can deterministically um, um, roll back or roll forward. And that's essentially the reason why we, we support only one and two, or two. All right, going back to the PowerPoint. Uh, the last one, if in multi-Z, 2016 and 2017 Enterprise Edition only. Now, let's talk about this for, for a second. Um, essentially, for 2016 and for 2017 Enterprise Edition, we rely on always on availability group uh, for multi-Z. For all other editions and all the versions of Enterprise, we rely on database mirroring. And the limitation is that um, there is no way to support distributed transaction transactions when you are in database mirroring. I'm, I'm repeating, it's not a limitation of RDS. It is a limitation of MSDTC and database mirroring. So again, if you're in multi-IZ, then essentially MSDTC is supported for 2016 and 2017 Enterprise Edition only. Um, if you're in single AZ, then 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 this limitation is 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 not applicable, obviously. All right, step by step from the very top. First, we're going to create our custom option group and we're going to enable MSDTC. 
Second, we'll create our custom parameter group where we're going to modify in DAO transaction resolution setting. We will set it to one. Third, we will launch two domain join RDS instances. And then, as you can see here, steps number four and five marked as demo one, and then steps number six, seven, and eight marked as demo two. And essentially, we're going to explore two very different ways of configuring MSDTC. In the first demo, we're going to set up a linked server between the two RDS instances. And then we're going to execute our distributed transaction over that linked server. In the second demo, we're going to set up a C -sharp project where we're going to rely on the transaction scope class. And essentially, we will control the transaction from the application itself. So let's jump to the next slide. And this is, this is the diagram, architecture diagram for both of these um, configurations. So as I mentioned, in the first demo right here, we're going to have two, both of our RDS instances, they both going to be um, uh, Active Directory joined. And then we're going to have a client application, and we're going to make it simple. It's just going to be SSMS. It's going to be SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to connect to one of our RDS instances. We're going to initiate distributed transaction, and distributed transaction is going to go over um, the, the linked server. In this configuration, in this configuration, in demo one, the MSDTC that's running on the RDS instance where we're going to connect to will be our transaction manager. And it's going to enlist the second instance as the resource manager. Uh, but, but the point is that the, the transaction manager, a service that will coordinate the transaction, will be the MSDTC service running on our first instance, right? So this is our first demo. Now let's take a look at the second demo. The second demo here involves setting up transaction scope project, configuring local MSDTC service, and then executing distributed transactions. So going back to the to our uh, diagram, um, here's what our second demo gonna look like. We're going to have all three of our instances, the dev box, the first instance, and the second instance be AD joint. Again, it's going to be managed AD joint. And we're going to set up our um, C sharp application and we're going to configure that application to rely on the local MSDTC service. In this configuration, it's the local MSDTC service that's running locally on the client will assume the role of the transaction manager, in which case both of our RDS instances will just become a resource managers. All right, um, so that's that's step-by-step -step instructions. And with that, let's jump straight to our, our demo. All right, before we start building it out, let's explore and let's see what I already have in my account. So here on EC2 dashboard, I have two instances running. Let's take a look at them. Uh, first, I have my jump box. And again, jump box is nothing but a uh, 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 a Windows instance that's sitting in the, in the public subnet. And I also have this development box, and that's where I installed all of my um, Microsoft uh, development stack. I have SQL Server, I have Visual Studio, I have data tools, I have, I have everything on this box. Now, that's EC2. On RDS, it's very simple. I don't have anything. 
well, let's confirm that that's the fact. All right, no instances found. And also, in my directory service, I have a directory, mycorp2.com, uh, which is a Microsoft Active Directory of size standard deploy. And when we launched our RDS instances, we will be joining those RDS instances to this domain, to mycorp2.com domain. All right, with that, let's go to RDS and let's create our option group, custom option group. So here off of the left nav, we click on options group and we go ahead and we create a group. And let's call it MS DTC enabled. And I'm going to say the same thing in the description. Engine, I'm going to go with Enterprise Edition. And I'm going to go with 2017. Let's click Create. Here's our option group, MSDTC enabled. And uh, let's go ahead and let's add an option. All right, <clears throat> the options, the option install obviously going to be MSDTC. Now scrolling down, we're coming up on the port. Uh, 5000 is the default, but here you can see the range of allowed values. I'm going to change it to 10,000. It's just going to be easier for remember for me to remember this way. And um, and then there will be a security group. I'm going to leave my private SQL Server security group just to remember that this security group should allow any traffic going at the port 10,000 to come through. There is another very important port, port 135, that also should be, must be allowed um, by your, by a virtual firewall. All right. Um, Scrolling down, we're coming up now on the authentication type. And if you click on that drop down, there will be two options mutual and none. Essentially, if you pick mutual, then the RDS instances will authenticate each other using Windows integrated auth, which obviously means that both instances have to be um, managed AD joint. Now, if you pick none, then no mutual authentication will be performed between the two hosts. And obviously this is not recommended. It's very weak uh, uh, security posture. Um, so not recommended for production environment. So I'm gonna go with mutual. And actually that's one of the reasons why I decided for my demo to go with um, AD joint RDS instances. There is another reason, and we will talk about that reason when we talk about the limitation, and it has to do with the, with the DNS resolution. All right, uh, transaction log size, as I'm sure you're aware, Microsoft Distributed Transaction Coordinator maintains its own transaction log, so I'll say, I don't know, 10, and this setting controls the size of that, of that log. Now we're coming up on the additional configurations. Let's click on that. Uh, here you can see ability to enable or disable inbound and outbound connections. Now, I will have both of my RDS instances be associated with this option group, which means for me, I'm gonna leave both of them checked. Now, depending on your configuration, if you want to have one RDS instance say uh, only accept inbound and um, another RDS uh, generate only outbound connection, then please know that this is where you can control that. In this case, you would have, obviously, you would have to set up two separate options group, but that's fine, that, that works. Um, and here we're coming up on the allowed protocols. There is XA and then there is 
S-N-A-L-U. I'm not going to go into the details of those protocols. If you need to know, if you're curious, please look them up. There is a tons of tons of in, tons of stuff written about those protocols. And actually, if you're curious where these settings come from, um, let me show you. Here's the component services, and if I'm drilled down, and here's my distributed transaction coordinator, here's local DTC, and if I click on the properties, and then go to security, you can see that the settings that we just went through map pretty much one-to-one -to, -one, um, to the security settings um, of the of the DTC property. So it's all it's all right here. Uh, allow um, the remote um, inbound outbound connections. It's right here and enable XA and enable SNALU protocol. So it's all it's all right from this form. All right. And let's go back to the form. And here we're coming up on scheduling. And obviously I am going to click immediately and click modify. All right. Seems like our option group now has well it's been created and now msdtc has been added as an option to our custom built option group now let's go to parameter groups and let's create a custom parameter group and we're gonna call it we're gonna call it in doubt well first let's pick the right engine we're gonna do sql server enterprise 14 which is 2017 group name let me call it in doubt modified and i'm going to call it in doubt transaction modified let's create and here it is and let's now let's click on that and let's find our inbound exact resolution so currently this setting is set to zero and as you can see the allowed values um, it allows for zero one and two now if you remember early on we said that rds only supports one and two. So I'm going to edit these parameters and I'm going to set it to one. And I'm going to save changes. All right. And now it is one. And now we are ready to launch our, our database instances. So let's go ahead and let's create database, SQL Server, Enterprise. We're going to fly real quick through this screen. I'm going to go ahead with dev test. Uh, it's going to be database one. I'll leave a bunch of these settings to their defaults. Database instance size, let's leave it as a default. Storage default. I'm going to uncheck. Um, auto scaling for storage, we're just not going to use it. I'm going to leave it with single AZ. Uh, connectivity, it's going to be in the default VPC. Uh, for the subnet group, let's place it in the private subnet group. And I suggest you do the same, putting it in the public, putting any database engine in the public uh, subnet, which is exposed to, to the internet. That's just a recipe for disaster. And here uh, on the VPC security group, I'm going to pick my private SQL Server security group. Uh, let's remove default and let's add private SQL Server security group. Uh, default availability zone, default database port. Here we're coming up on the Windows auth. As I said before, there is only one directory. 
um, AWS Manage directory that I have. I'm going to choose that. And here under additional configuration, I'm going to pick in doubt modify for the parameter group and MSDTC enabled for the option group. I'm going to leave time zone collation alone. I'm going to leave backup. I'm going to disable encryption. I'm going to disable performance insights. I'm disabling all these great features just to make it go faster. And I'm going to create database. All right, that's going to take a minute or two. And I'm also going to go ahead and create a second instance, database two, with exactly the same with exactly the same steps. And I'm going to come back when it's all done. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, and now it seems like we have both of our instances, database one and database two, are ready, up and running, and available. All right, we're back to our step-by-step -step instructions, and let's see what we accomplished so far. We completed step number one, we created our option group. We completed step two, we created our parameter group, and we completed step three, we launched two domain join RDS instances. And now we're coming up on step four and five, which is a part of the demo one, and that is executing distributed transaction over a linked server. So going back to our uh, diagram here, this is what we're about to do. We already have two instances. They both AWS Active Directory joined. Uh, but we're going to set up a linked server right here. And then we're going to have our client application, in which case it's going to be SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to connect to one of these instances. And that's where we're going to initiate our distributed transaction from, in which case it's going to go over the linked server. In, in this case, the MSDTC running our, on our first instance will become a transaction manager and the second instance would be will be a resource manager all right with that let's jump straight to the demo all right we're here on our development box and here i'm connected to our database one instance as a master user sql authenticated user now um and here i also have these two commands and what they do they essentially create a linked server now please remember um, you cannot create a linked server using graphical interface gui requires sa access um, so creating it using the the explicit sql commands um, is really the only option and by the way i have included this link this is the very last link here uh, at the bottom of the page where it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a linked server in, in, different, in different configurations. All right, so why don't we go ahead and execute these commands? All right, so now it seems like we should have our linked server created. All right. Now we've got linked server to instance two. All right, and now essentially we're ready to execute our distributed transaction. So here's the very simple trivial script. What it's gonna do, it's gonna create this database. It's gonna put single table in it. It's gonna be empty. And then we're gonna execute um, a, a distributed transaction across two instances. All right, uh, so I am currently connected to instance database one. Let's go ahead and let's create this part of the script. That's database one. Let's now go ahead and let's execute. Uh, let's connect to instance two. And let's build the same objects there. All right, test DB, test DB. All right, so both databases and tables been created on both instances. Let's now switch connection back to database one. And now we should be able to execute our distributed transaction. Let's point to test DB. 
And here you go. We just successfully executed distributed transactions and we inserted one record in, um, in the table. So if we were to check table one, here's one record. If we want to take a look maybe at the second instance, it's obviously going to be hero as well. All right. All right. And that that brings us to the end of the, our first demo. Let's go back to our step-by-step um, -step instructions. So we've completed now steps four and five. And now we have we have demo two. We're gonna set up a transaction scope project. We're gonna configure a local MSDTC service, and then we're gonna execute uh, distributed transaction that will be controlled by our client application. All right, we are here on my development box and. To remind you, this development box is also a D, managed AD joint. It's part of the same mycorp2.com domain. I have Visual Studio installed here. And um, essentially, this is very simple. This is console app, C sharp. And the class that we interested in is transaction scope. Right, so this class is defined in system.transactions right here. You obviously need to uh, add a reference here. And then let's explore what I have here. I have two connection strings to both of my RDS instances. I'm using integrated security, as you can see here and here. And I have uh, uh, very simple trivial insert statements against both of my tables. In this case, I will be inserted a value of 10 in both, in both tables. And then oh, let's scroll down. Essentially, I'm gonna instantiate my transaction scope. And then after that, I'm gonna instantiate my connection object, and I'm gonna open my connection. Um, as soon as I open my connection, I'm gonna instantiate my command one, and I'm gonna execute non-query against, against, um, against my connection. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna instantiate my second connection, open the connection, and execute and execute the second command as non-query again. And the point of all of these, of, of all of that, is that both of these commands, command one and command two, are being executed within the bounds of a single transaction scope. So here's transaction scope, and here I complete my scope. All right, um, so we have set up, let's go here. We have just set up our transaction scope project, and now it's time to configure our local MSDTC service. All right, we are here on component services. Let's expand. Let's find our distributed transaction coordinator. It's right here. Expand local DTC. Let's go to properties, click on security, and let's enable network DTC access. Let's, in, let's allow inbound and outbound distributed transactions. And let's set our authentication to mutual authentication required right here. And by the way, if you look at this portion of the screen, you will find that this, this is a very, very similar to our uh, MSDTC option group, all right? All right, and let's go ahead and let's click apply. It's gonna restart the service. Service has been restarted, okay, and click okay. All right, now 
we all done and we are ready to execute our distributed transaction. Uh, one more thing, very important, and that is this this is built in firewall rules. Uh, let's go to inbound rules. And there are three rules here in the distributed transaction coordinator group. These three, very, very important. They need to be, they need to be enabled. Um, if you use a standard AM, AMI from Amazon, uh, they will be enabled. I also believe that the, the standard installation of, of Windows also have them enabled, but, um, but please make sure that they are enabled in your environment as well. And on the outbound rules, we have one built-in rule right here and that also needs to be enabled that is it we all done and now let's go ahead and let's execute our distributed transaction i'm back to my visual studio and let's kick it off all right and it seems like we have come to the scope completion step and let me hit five all right it seems like we successfully executed our distributed transaction that's been controlled by the client application so let's go to our management studio and let's see that indeed we have a second value of 10 inserted in our record and obviously if you look at the second instance you will also see you'll also see number 10 there and that brings us to the end of our second demo i hope that was beneficial but before we close on it, I would like to go back to our PowerPoint and take a look at some of the limitations that this support comes with from the very top. And we've talked about this already. Number one, MSDTC is not supported on instances using SQL Server database mirroring. Um, so which means that if you essentially in multi-Z, you're in standard edition or you are in the older versions of enterprise editions um, msdtc is not supported in multi-z you're pretty much limited to 2016 and 2017 enterprise edition and again it's not a limitation of rds this is limitation of msdtc and database mirroring number two in doubt transaction resolution parameter must be set to one or zero again we've talked about this but we need to provide deterministic way of resolving these in doubt transaction and that's why we don't support uh value zero which is no presumption uh number three you can read it yourself but essentially what it means it, it means that if you are if you don't have your rds instances domain join then all the host names that participate in, in the distributed transactions would have to be resolvable using their net bias names. And that adds additional complexity, it adds additional manual step because now you have to configure your DNS entries so that that resolution can take place. And for domain join instances, that just um, automatically supported, automatically maintained by RDS. And that's a second reason why, uh, why I chose uh, domain join instances for my, for my demo. And to remind you, the first reason was mutual authentication. And number four, distributed transactions that depend on the custom built client DLL um, are not supported on RDS. The, you can find the full list follow, following that link down below. And that brings us to the end of this uh, demo. I hope that was beneficial. 
I would like to thank every single one of you for finding time and watching this video. And at the end, I would like to wish all of you happy computing from all of us at AWS. Thank you very much.